uh, sensing that the uh, market was moving to the high end, did the right thing in terms of understanding that software was going to be a differentiator and initiated their own software development projects to be able to differentiate their phone, most notably with Mego. Um, so if I were a McKinsey consultant inside Nokia, I would probably tell Nokia to do what they in fact did, which was differentiate via a high-end software platform so they could bring together the best of software with the best of hardware and really add to a differentiated product as well as develop an ecosystem. You have to remember that Nokia tried to do that as well insofar as they have moved OV forward. The big issue was that despite being probably the right strategy, it wasn't succeeding. Uh, I'm not sure I know entirely why that was the case, but they weren't executing fast enough. And so Nokia needed to change. Uh, Ramin, you actually, uh, Nokia has been around. I mean, we all know Nokia phones. They were the really first ones to pioneer. Sure. Kind of small form factor, you know, cell phones and mobile phones. Huge market share. But in the past three years, you wrote in a post, your observation was, mm -hmm. they went from hero to zero in three years. Talk about what, how big were they and what really happened to them? So I think that, that, that First of all, yeah, they were one of the largest mobile companies out there, especially in Europe where they've been, you know, the, the Nordic ecosystem uh, has been one of the leading uh, basically for mobiles in the world. And, and so what we have in Finland and Sweden is comparable in, in many aspects to what there is, in, for example, South Korea or Japan. So, uh, so it's been driving the industry and, and the entire country forward. And it's been a very, very important thing. That's one thing. Uh, one thing is that people consider now the failure of Nokia in the recent years. I actually date it back a little bit further. Um, if you remember, back when uh, phones had no touch screens, we had the, well, you had to have a keyboard in there. And so what they had was the clamshells. You remember the clamshell folds yeah. that would unfold and stuff yep, like, a little yeah. bit like Star Trek. And so basically, Nokia did not build these phones, if you remember. They completely missed that train. So, uh, so what happened is that already then they started lagging, and that's when they started pushing the N95 and phones like that. So um, they started lagging there and started pushing then their own platforms and, and missed the whole basically UI slash iPhone experience. 